we are talking about contingency planning. So again, this week um, we're focusing on more the, the business management side of security and how you plan for security within an organization. <coughs> so, you know, as we all know very clearly by now, security is often described in terms of protecting um, confidentiality, integrity and availability. Um, and obviously in, in the situation where something goes wrong with your organization, you want to be able to continue your business and continue to make money. So businesses need to plan for when things go wrong so that they can actually recover. And so they have some kind of procedures in place for how they're going to recover from something going wrong. So all businesses should have a business continuity plan. Uh, and essentially it just describes how they would go about recovering and continuing operations when they're under adverse conditions. So something bad's happening, how do they continue to do their thing? Um, and that's really large scope and it's not just going to be about IT security, it's going to be like everything. What happens if um, you know an earthquake happens and the whole organization needs to you know relocate and stuff like that. So an organization should have that kind of plan in place. Um, and within that plan will be disaster recovery planning. So how do they recover IT after some kind of disaster has happened? And also an organization um, that is of any significant size should probably have an incident response plan. So how do they um, plan to go about responding to incidents as they happen and, and um, investigating them? So when there are computer security incidents, then how do they actually go about dealing with that? So a business continuity plan um, basically describes <laughs> how you would continue to operate when things are going wrong uh, and how to actually recover your operations, your, your ability to um, provide your services and things after an event's happened. So. Um, you know, as I said before, it's not just information security, but all all parts of the organisation need to be able to recover and get up to a, a working state, uh, and within some kind of predetermined time and some kind of level of operations. So, what are the sorts of things that you would plan for? Well, the natural disasters, right? So, what if there's a flood or an earthquake and you're in the business? What are they going to do about it? What if there's a theft? Someone steals steals your server in the middle of the night. You know, yeah. And then when it comes to natural disasters, won't that be a, a pre-contingency plan before setting up the business? You know, is this place, for example, built on the San Francisco fault line? If it is, what are we going to get an earthquake? Yeah. You know, it, would, would you do a pre-analysis before? <laughs> you would also just make the, you know, do a risk assessment of these things before you make a decision, as you say, before you actually decide to build in a certain area or relocate your organization within a certain area, you might look at what the risks are associated with living there. But after you've made that, made that decision, you need to have a plan in place for these things. And you know, kind of the same thing as what we were talking about in the risk management topic, is you're looking at these things that could, could go wrong and decide what you're going to do about it. Um, so a business continuity plan is like bigger scope. So what, is, what are we going to do if any of these really big things happen? Are we going to be able to recover in some way? Uh, what if you know we've got vandalism, fire? So what if what, someone plants? You know, what if there's an explosion? Um, what if there's a supply chain interruption? Uh, we have a, a strike, worker strike, which stops us from being able to um, you know have a normal level of workforce. So there's some kind of disease. What if Ebola rolls through our um, you know our employee employer uh, employee workforce? You know. Um, probably not very likely unless you're based you know, in certain areas in the world at the moment. Uh, and even then only if you're handling blood or feces, otherwise you're probably okay. They just, yeah, obviously I'm not a health professional. Um, but yeah, so you're planning for these kind of things. What happens if something, well, some, something goes wrong? What happens, um, with, you know, what happens specifically to do with the IT side of things, which is obviously what we're more comfortable with and know more about because that's what we do, right? Um, what if there's a security incident? What happens if you know our server's been hacked? What do we, 
you know, what level of compromise? What do we do about it? Um, and um, you know, how do we respond to an incident, which is the second part of this talk that I'll give. So it's not the business continuity planning and continuity plan is not specific to IT, but um, it covers everything in the business, including IT. So in order to actually do the planning, you would start with some analysis. So you do threat analysis and business impact analysis. You design, design a solution, you implement your solution, you test it, and you maintain it. So uh, in order to do impact analysis, you need to decide um, you know, which of your organization's um, processes are actually mi mission critical. What is it that you do that is the thing that you really need to make sure that you continue to do? And what are the requirements? So say, for example, you, um, you're at Amazon, uh, and say we're just talking about the retail section of Amazon. Um, for that business unit, their requirements will be, you know, we want to keep this website up. We want people to be able to make purchases. And people need to be able to access this, because downtime costs us <coughs> massive amounts of money. So we want to make sure that we're up. We don't want to lose our business to someone else. Um, but if we were to going to, to go down, then at the bare minimum, we want to be back online in this amount of time, and we want to at least be able to sell. Maybe uh, marketplace stuff's not important, say, we want, but we want to get our core part of our website back online. That's like the most important thing. Um, so those are the sorts of decisions that, that you need to make. And um, you know, is the risk of disruption ex acceptable? And you know, is there laws that say that we need certain things back up and running? You know, if we if we produce medical equipment, for example, and um, something goes wrong, then fixing it is going to be prioritizing. You know, do we get people people's like respiratory units and stuff back online? Obviously, that people's lives are at stake in that situation. And you know you couldn't just decide. Oh no, it's more important to get our um, web server up or something like that, right? You need to prioritize <coughs> uh, based on all sorts of things. So um, again, looking at the risk management side of things, is it cost effective? And based on that, we'll make our decisions about how we're going to go about recovering. So you know, if we need to relocate to a different building, then we might not need to do that for all of our services, but just to get the bare minimum stuff running again. Um, so yeah, so we need to be able to do that prioritization of how important our processes and assets are. So in order to do that, we need to look at business requirements and technical requirements. Um, and the terminology used for describing the level of what we get back to um, is the recovery point objective. So that's, for example, we have these services available after a disaster. This is the stuff we need to get back online, the most important stuff. Um, and what about data in a database? How often do we back it up? Um, you know, if is it okay? Because backups obviously take time and resources and everything like that. We might, just, we might be doing a daily backup of our database, but is that okay? Are we willing to risk losing one day's worth of data? Depends on the business, right? Mm. If you're talking about sales and things, if, if you've got a whole day of sales data that you lose and you haven't shipped products yet, that could be quite costly. Um, so in that situation, you might be more like hourly or you know maybe you can keep a, a total up-to-date version of a backup synced at the same time. So those are the sorts of things that you need to decide ahead of time. How much can we afford to lose? So what is our recovery point objective? Another one is recovery time objective. How much time are we willing for it to take? Um, you know, and these are things that you could specify in, you know, as a requirements document if you sign off on someone else providing services for you, backup services or something. So, you know, you're, you are going to provide these services, but the recovery point objective is we want to have, you know, this much available to us and it needs to be available like within a certain amount of time. Uh, so, you know, if we've got a, a website that's going to be making us lots of money, how long is it okay for us to take to, to spin it back up? And you know you'll never really know how well your plans work unless you test them, obviously. So if you've got 
these plans that you're going to be able to get all your servers back up and running within an hour, and you've never ever turned your server off before, good luck with that. Like, you know, how are you going to know that that's that you can actually do it within that time unless you actually test your procedures at some point, test your backups, you know, actually go in there and find out whether it's going to succeed or whether it's going to be a horrible failure. Because you don't want to find out that when it's an, when it's an emergency. So threat analysis, you know, again, is just documenting all the different threats, including the unlikely ones. So similar to what you guys were doing in the risk management task last week. Um, and identify threats, so the things that would actually pose a critical impact. And then designing your solutions, again, is looking at what the problems are, come up with solutions that are actually going to allow you to recover. Um, and, you know, but we're specifically talking about recovering and we're not talking about every kind of risk management and assessment that goes on, but how do we get our business back up and running? How do we continue to operate? Um, you know, what is the command and organizational structure within the organization? So who, who actually has a say in what happens? What, what, what are the actual processes we use to follow to recover things? If none of that's documented, then you're going to have a hell of a time actually trying to you know, recover your organization if something really bad happens. So it needs to be documented what, what are the steps that would actually happen under those scenarios and have people actually know about what the procedures are. Um, you might have a secondary site, so you might have backups, um, you might have a synchronization of backups to a secondary site. Nowadays probably we're talking about network backups, so backing up into the cloud you know, some kind of um, off-site place where you can have a backup of all your things. Um, you might also have, you know, all your network and telecommunications and everything at a secondary site as well. So again, you know, say we're talking about Wall Street, then we're talking much bigger. Probably you've got entire, like maybe you've got a, an office where you can actually relocate to and continue to be there with all your people. On a smaller scale, it might just be, oh, we've got some cloud hosting that we can switch to. If something goes wrong, we've got a, a secondary server that's up that we can just point our DNS to and things will continue to work. So it's all, you know, it depends on the organization's needs. Um, so we'll have a disaster, recover, disaster recovery plan. So as I said before, it's like the technical plan. What are the actual IT things that we do step by step in actually to get services back? Uh, we've got incident <coughs> response plan. So that's how we're actually going to respond to individual threats so we've got some kind of computer security breach what do we do about it um, and that could include stuff that's outside of uh, business continuity plan because that you know that might not just be things that are stopping our organization but just in general a business will have an incident response capability so how do we actually respond to things that are happening and depending on what's actually happening that might escalate to looking at dis disaster recovery plans so we would then implement what we've decided is the right thing to do and we run some drills to actually test that it's going to work and we need to maintain you know keep our plans up to date verify that it actually works if we do a test and find out well actually that's not working or actually we need more than just a day's worth of data or a week we can't afford to lose that so we need to like you know reconsider what our plans are so in terms of the business continuity, um, you know, you, the disaster recovery side of things is looking at, you know, what IT infrastructure, you, you, what are your requirements. So if you're, you know, a large corporation or you're in an office block or, you know, a hospital or whatever, you're going to have different needs that you need to adapt to. Uh, and that's going to include both making sure that data is available, um, but also systems and services are available. So you know they're both important things so the the fact that the information is there but also that whatever service you're providing you can continue to provide so what happens when actual individual computers go down um, you know what what if you were um, say were say here at Leeds Met what would happen if the um, an individual uh, staff computer stopped working what, what do you think? How would that impact our operations? Use a different computer? As long as the staff member has backup of their actual stuff. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. There, yeah, network drives and things like that. If they use them. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if the entire network goes down? Which actually happened. Um, the it was a, it was about half a day, a couple of weeks ago. None none of the staff members had access to the network at all. Um, so like in that situation, how do you think that impacts our ability to to work and provide you guys with what you you know Just serves? Back to old fashioned teaching. Old fashioned teaching. Well, we still had access to our own computers, we just didn't have access to the network. So would you also have your own sort of account from the student network with different privileges? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that means that stops us from being able to do what's, you know, quite probably you'll agree an important part of our, you know, what we provide is actually replying to your emails about things. So, um, you know, what happens when you stop being able to access the internet, for example? Uh, you know, now a lot of stuff's moving into the cloud and we're outsourcing all sorts of services onto the internet. And in some cases, that can be like everything you end up doing is all on the, on some kind of server on the internet. So at my previous workplace before I was here, I was working as a software engineer, and there was a day where the network went down completely for the day. Um, so that day, I couldn't commit any code that I'd written, and it's pretty hard to do active development if you can't make any commits of your code. So because um, we weren't using Git, so it's a version, so it's centralized um, software repository. So we couldn't commit any code, so it basically stopped me from being able to do proper development work. I uh, couldn't actually work on any documentation, which is something we also needed to do. We needed to like document the way that processes work and stuff. That was all on a wiki, so we couldn't get to that. Uh, couldn't monitor actual progress on, the, on a, the ticketing system, so that's like a system where you can like specify you know, bugs that are there and what, what, what have we done to resolve different issues. That was on the network as well. Couldn't even work on spreadsheets because I was using Google Docs. So essentially, um, you know, we, we had an entire office full of software developers and engineers not being very productive at all, just sitting around like, should we go home? I don't know, like can't actually do any work. Um, and imagine how much money that's costing the company that are hiring us. So we basically, they're paying all of our wages, an entire day's worth of wages for us to be sitting around on our asses just twiddling our thumbs, not knowing what to do. It's like, as you can imagine, the, syst the system administrators were not having a great day that day. Um, and I think it's one of those jobs where if you're doing your job well as a sysadmin, no one knows that you're even there. Like, you know, it's like, oh, everything's working fine, it's all good. Then when, you know, when stuff happens, uh, it's, you know, you have basically have an old office full of people standing around criticizing the two people that were trying to fix the network. Um, yeah, not not great. Um, so yeah, generally what what you aim for in IT is typically you aim for the five nines. So that's ninety nine point nine 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 percent availability. Um, so. You, so you've got uh, uptime is basically how how often you're actually your systems are online and downtime is when you're it's unavailable. Um, so if you're aiming for five nines, you're actually aiming for only five point two six minutes per year where you're offline, uh, and that basically equals six point oh five seconds a week. So it's quite hard to, you know, depending on what what you see. Obviously, we didn't meet that in uh, in my like last <coughs> workplace. And generally speaking, here I haven't had any major issues. Um, other, yeah, I haven't really had any major issues with like network connectivity or anything like that. Uh, but based on that one day where the network wasn't working, we didn't reach nine five nines here either within the you know within our office space. So recovery time is just terminology that means how long it takes to recover, pretty obviously. Um, and it depends, like as I said, what your requirements are. 
It's just a quick command on, on like a Unix based system, you just type uptime and it will tell you how long the computer's been turned on for. Uh, it'll tell you like the current time, how long it's been on, what how many users are connect, currently connected to the machine, uh, and the number of processors that are currently running. So the so to do dust disaster recovery, you're looking at how you actually plan to prevent the disaster. So for example, you might use redundancy. So instead of having one server, you might have like two servers there that you know that you're routing through to so that if something goes wrong you can continue to have that service available you have some way of actually detecting when some kind of disaster happens what ha you know detect that something's gone wrong and we actually recover um, our infrastructure after the event so we've got plans in place that are actually designed to fulfill a recovery point objective and a recovery time objective so we could use um, redundancy to do that. So we might have mirrored data or services. We might have um, use RAID like arrays like redundant array of independent disks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're saying setting up like say two servers to handle the workload, yeah. Would you make sure that the like both servers have whatever's running on them doesn't take them to the max capacity? So say it only uses half of the yeah. strength, and then if yeah. something goes down. Ideally, yeah. Like if you look at somewhere like Google, they've just got you know whole clusters of servers that you don't just have one server that's giving you the fake the um the Google um, search page, right? If they just had one server that was trying to serve the whole world, that one page it would just it would be impossible. So they have a whole load of service servers that will actually be providing that, and they have load balancers and stuff to actually you know share that workload out and they've also used DNS so that you know you have multiple IP addresses and so yeah there's there's a number of ways that they design it so that you have uh, redundancy in that system and we'll be talking about redundancy again uh, I think maybe next week or the week afterwards so we'll go into this in a little bit more detail um, so, you know, so we have like backup power supplies so that you know if Say for example, the power goes down. We've got a little generator, or we've got some back, you know, battery-powered thing that will keep our servers running. I can't remember. It's either Facebook or Google that actually have they designed their own. This, this is years ago. They design so that a lot of their servers actually have um, UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies, built into the, each server. So they have like these racks of servers, and each one has basically a battery built into it, so that if the power goes out, all of these servers can continue to run. Uh, for a certain amount of time as long as power comes back on again. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you've got failover and obviously all of our sec security co controls are protecting all these things as well so we need to make sure that security is done right because that's what's going to stop, you know, make sure that we continue to be able to provide the availability of these services. So we've got data backups, again something we'll be talking about soon, so it might be off-site or on-site, might be directly on a hard drive or it might be over a network to a, you know, somewhere else got service backups um, you know maybe we've got um, a separate site with stuff or it might be you know with backup servers and things we'll have procedures to actually restore our networks and systems so what you know hardware software configuration we've got a secondary site um, which might be either a hot site which means that we could literally just walk into the, the office and it's all just there ready to go so we, you know if you've got a hot, hot site it's quite expensive obviously to have a separate redundant office space that you could just relocate to, all your servers are there and it's just uh, continue business as usual. It's quite quite unusual to have that level of um, redundancy available. You might have a warm site, so somewhere where you could go, say for example some shared, you know, some other organization where you know you've got a couple of servers in the back office somewhere and they've got some spare computers that some of your staff could go into and use that space if they really need to in an emergency. Um, or a cold site, which is essentially it's somewhere you could go, but it's like quite a lot of work to actually get things working again. So this, the related topics, very closely related to what I've just been talking about, is back, backup and recovery, um, and incident response, which is what I'm going to talk about in a minute. So that's the end of that topic. Does anyone have any um, questions?